Hello there and welcome back to Dimmerborn. Now today's episode is going to be a little bit different because I've just woken up and uh, read through all those comments that uh, you have left on the previous episode which was episode 8 where we talked about alternative power sources and we experimented with the with the water dumps and water pumps over here. Uh, so that was a that was an interesting episode and uh, going through the comments as well it seemed uh, I don't want to say it was quite a debate but there was a lot of uh, different thoughts around what is the most efficient way to get power in this playthrough. So I thought I'd uh, run some stats, do some research on the on the big web and uh, and see um, and present to you what I've what I found out. Now, by all means, this is not a tutorial uh, because some of that information is very difficult to, to find and might not be accurate. So please do not take it as a holy Bible that you should definitely always follow. So yeah, with, uh, with that being said, let's uh, actually jump into, into, the, into my findings then. And here we are in the almighty Google Sheets where I have consolidated all my findings. So first of all, we need to be aware of those bonuses. Now, the information I found online, whether it was on Reddit or, or elsewhere, I cannot guarantee that what sort of bonuses they their beavers had in their test runs. But the testing that I did, I used 0% uh, bonuses to make sure it's uh, as accurate as I can. But again, I do not know what sort of setup uh, other people had when they presented um, their findings. Okay, so the second thing, we needed to find an even number where the output of the water wheel and the engine would be the same. So that seems to be uh, nine engines that gives us 1800 uh, horsepower and 10 water wheels. So over here we have a little tally of what everything uh, does. So there's three power, power sources. The power wheel gives us 50 horsepower, takes up three tiles, and that means uh, the horsepower provided per tile is 16.6 .6 roughly. And it also requires one beaver to operate. With the water wheel, it gives us 180 horsepower, takes up six tiles, gives us 30 horsepower per tile. It does not require anyone to operate, but it does need flowing water. And the last on our list is the engine, which gives us 200 horsepower, takes up nine tiles, and the horsepower per tile will be 22.2. .2. It also needs someone to operate it and consumes one log per hour. Now, another thing to highlight in this uh, uh, testing here is I have not accounted for any sort of infrastructure that you need in place so when it comes to road power shafts or or any platforms you might need to build as well so with that being said let's jump into our first power producer which would be the engine so let's start with the top half over here so one engine provides us 200 horsepower requires one log per hour and this means 24 logs per day uh, it also takes one beaver to operate and we don't really need to round it up because it's already nice and round and and uh, that also means 72 maples needs to be planted. So how did I get to this number? Well, let's jump into uh, this table over here. So first of all, I had to look at which tree is the best for us to plant. So the three options we have are the perch, which gives us one log and it takes nine days to grow. So that means per day we get roughly about 0 0.1 logs. With the pine, we get two logs, but it takes 12 days and that gives us 0 0.16 logs per day, which is already a a little bit higher than the perch. Now the last one on our list is the maple which gives us eight logs after 24 days and that brings us to 0.3 which is much better than any of the previous ones and to get one log per day we would need nine perches six pines or three maples so we can already see that maples is our go-to and that is what I used in my testing or calculations as well now how do we get this 72 so what I did is I put in okay we need 24 logs per day and that would mean we need 72 maples now when it comes to the number of horsepower that we use to sort of have the uh, same platform for all power producers we would need nine logs per hour 216 per day, 9 beavers in total, and 648. So if I change that to 216 logs per day, we can see that we need 648 maples in total, and that's quite a lot. Now, with the engine, we also need additional infrastructure. That is not roads or, or power shafts or anything else. So with that, we are going to need 1.9 foresters. So to get to that number, we use the efficiency of 0%. A forester can plant 14 maples, which is about 112 logs. A lumberjack 
can cut down 3.75 trees a day which uh, nets us about 30 30 logs and what we've done here is also we rounded them up so for uh, base level we would need one forester and for uh, our bigger setup we would need at least at least two right when it comes to lumberjacks uh, for the uh, for our level we would need at least eight and that brings the total beavers required to run this engine to 19 okay so that is the engine now the next one on our list is the water water wheel these numbers were actually based off a reddit post so i'll link it uh, in the in the video as well so you can have a read through yourselves but essentially water wheel produces us 180 the additional infrastructure that we will need here is the water Water pump and the water dump. Now this is where it gets very tricky uh, to find information on on how many water pumps or dumps do we uh, exactly need. But I based my numbers off this post over here where they had uh, about six water pumps and twelve water dumps. It's a one to two ratio, and that's uh, that's what I've tried to follow here as well. Just to run one of those water wheels, I decided that okay, one pump should be enough, and maybe if we get two uh, at least two dumps in there with two haulers to move things around, we need to of five beavers to ramp this up a little bit i decided to use the same setup which will be six water pumps and 12 water dumps so with that i included also nine haulers that can move all that water around which brings us our our total beavers required to to about 27 i also did a rough test on the folk tales to see how much water can we really pump per day and and store it so what i did was over three days i had two beavers in a separate district they had only carrots no houses the productivity was about 85 percent ranging from 85 percent to 98 their shift length on all three days was 20 hours by the end of day one we had a total of 43 water stored by the end of day two we had 94 and then day three we had 142 that also includes them drinking water and um, based on based on this we can tell that on day one we produced 43 water day two 51 and then day three 48 which is an average of 47 point now the only thing I could not find out was how much water can a water dump actually dump out per day because that would help us to figure out how many water pumps do we need per day to be able to support uh, the, the water dumps. Other things we need to be aware of is also the evaporation rate which is 0.45 per day per tile and the drought length so if we had a 22 day drought then we would lose a whole voxel or a tile full of water and if that drought was let's say we changed it to 30 then we would lose almost 1.35 so one and a half voxels uh, right so these are my findings when it comes to the water wheel power wheel is pretty pretty straightforward and simple so for to produce 1800 horsepower we would need 36 beavers and water we uh, sorry power wheels all right so let's jump into the summary and see what we can take away from here so with all those three different power sources giving us 1800 horsepower the engine takes the least amount of beavers which is 19 water wheel comes second with 27 and power wheel needs 36 beavers to operate buildings wise so that's the actual power sources we need nine engines 10 water wheels or 36 power wheels when it comes to the tiles and how much space they take up the engines would be 81 tiles wheels the least amount which is 60 and power wheels would be 108 now looking at the additional infrastructure required again no roads power shafts or platforms this is mostly the trees that we need to plant that is 648 tiles roughly it goes up to 688 additional ones water wheel requires additional 66 and power wheel doesn't require anything else so that brings us to a total tiles of 769 for the engine 126 for the water wheel and power wheel wheel with only 108 now when it comes to the water wheel i have not accounted for any empty empty terrain or or areas where you might have some corners and you can't really put anything down so with that being said that number is probably going to be closer to 150 let's say so with that we can already see the engine will have the biggest footprint it is seven times larger than the power wheel setup the most critical part for us is how much horsepower we can now generate per tile with the engine that comes to only 2.3 now the water wheel and the power wheel are slightly closer with the water wheel 
wheel having 14.3 horsepower per tile and the power wheel with 16.7. And the last one, a horsepower per beaver. Engine provides us the most, which is 94.7. Then the next would be water wheel with 66.7. And power wheel gives us the least amount of uh, power per beaver, which is 50. We also have to account for a few more things. Now, with the water wheel setup, if you are running on a bigger or or a more difficult uh, setting, then you might not be able to rely on the water as much and you need additional infrastructure such as reservoirs to be able to let through some more water based on evaporation and all those things as well. So in my opinion, that is the most unreliable option. The second one would be the, uh, would be the engine really. It's just the amount of trees that you would need to plant and look after is, is pretty, pretty tough. Of course, if you're on a bigger map, this might be more suitable. However, all across the board, all Though it's quite beaver intensive, in my opinion, power wheel seems to be the best option. Other things noted down here as well is the time it takes to construct your setup and plus the research you need to put into this as well. Then the resources that you need. So for example, with engine, you will need metal. And with metal, that means you need to do some, uh, get some scrap and then you need to turn it into metal to build all those buildings as well. You, you do have to account for all that. And also the science points to unlock everything. With the first three, the power wheel is definitely a winner over here. Water wheel is probably second and the engine is the most difficult or more advanced to set up, let's put it that way. Depending on the difficulty, I would probably be happy to do the water wheel setup on a sort of like a normal or, or easy mode and same with the engine as well. But that also really depends on um, how much power does your colony need and how many beavers do you have available. For example, if I'm running a very small population, then uh, I suppose you could you could look at different options over, over here. But overall, I still still feel for the hard difficulty the power wheel is probably the, the best to really really set up especially when the droughts get very long as well but yeah that's essentially all my findings when when looking into this and that's what we did already in the previous episode as well i decided to put pause on the water wheel uh, system and not don't really want to get started with the engine just yet until we know exactly where to where to place them but uh, we are gonna go with the power wheel option for for us uh, it is the easiest to set up least amount of resources and construction and maintenance required and it's, it's very easy to manage as well we can just based on our power requirements we can always pause or unpause and uh, and yeah probably the last thing i'll have to take a look at is how much power do we actually need do we need this many consumer buildings maybe we can cut it down and uh, let some of them run in the background therefore requiring less uh, power wheels if you've noticed any mistakes do let me know in the comments if you have a additional thoughts as well throw it all in there and uh, well i really hope there wasn't any major mistakes in here and i hope you understand that it was quite difficult to find uh, information especially for the water wheel so we have to kind of do a bit of guesswork here and there i didn't really want to run a full day just testing out different setups for the water wheel i mean of course i could have but since it doesn't really have a creative mode where you can just plop things down and, and move stuff around i'd rather just play the game than spend more hours on testing stuff so so uh, thank you very much for listening so far and uh, hopefully this was a little bit helpful and we'll see you in the in the next episode.